Hi folks, so in this video I'm going to give an overview of network-based authentication, specifically helping you to understand and distinguish between some really important concepts like what single sign-on is, um, what account synchronization is, what like a centralized network-based authentication mechanism is, and understanding what some of those systems are, so things like Active Directory and Kerberos and LDAP which are real world um, systems that you'll see used everywhere. Uh, and uh, so in this video, I'll give you that overview and then in some separate videos, I'll go into some more details. So let's get started. So single sign-on is essentially where you can log into a system and then you can start using related systems and access related systems without being prompted for a password again. So for example, if I go to Google Docs and it prompts me to log in, and then I go back to Google, but a different, completely different server. I then visit like YouTube, for example. Uh, it doesn't prompt me to log in again. Um, and the way that most websites achieve that is using session cookies. Um, but you know, it's, there are similar systems like Kerberos that use like tickets and things on like that allow you to log into operating systems. Um, for example, and to access various like services on the network. And so that so there are. Um, uh, so that's single sign-on. So advantages is you don't have to keep typing your password over and over again, which will reduce um, password fatigue. Also, you don't have to actually have multiple systems where you're actually using the same password, but separate like accounts on each of those systems. Uh, it can reduce phishing success because you know if you're tricking users to enter credentials, there's just less opportunities to do that. Um, and you know, it can make life easier because you've got less things to manage, essentially, if it, well, it goes well. Um, if someone can steal your ticket or like session cookie, for example, on a website um, through Trojan horses or a wiretap, like eavesdropping, like a man in the middle attack, um, if, if they can get a, get a hold of your, permission, your ticket, then essentially they can like assume your identity. So, you know, that's something that just has to be carefully considered in terms of the security of, of the thing. Um, you have to think about whether the system is acting on the behalf of a user um, or you know, is the system authenticating of the, as the user or is the user authenticating. It's important to, to make the distinction between who's authenticating and who's making the actions. Um, there is one single point of failure when you're um, using single sign-on. Um, you know, that can make it easier, but can also mean that when things go wrong, it affects more systems. Uh, and we just have to make sure that we do it well, but, uh, you know, particularly well if it's, uh, you know, a system that is securing multiple other systems. So account synchronization is a separate but related concept. Um, and that's where we have like accounts or passwords that get synchronized between multiple machines. And you could imagine it would be quite easy to set something up that's a bit you know, a bit rough around the edges. I could basically set up uh, a schedule on like Linux, a cron job, uh, so that, it, or uh, what's it called, schedule tasks on Windows. Basically, you could just run it once every um, like day. We uh, copy the password file and shadow file from one server on our system to all our other servers. Uh, and that would mean that whenever someone tries to log into a system, they could use the same username and password across all of them. Um, so you could say it's not that hard, it wouldn't be hard to set that up. Um, and it's not single sign-on because they still have to sign into each system, but it's easier. Um, in that, that specific example that I just gave, there's a higher threat because now you've got your, um, instead of your shadow file, like your encrypted password, or your hashed password, sorry, being in one location, you now got it in a bunch of different places. Uh, but it is um, account synchronization is part of the way quite a few of the centralized solutions work, which we'll get to in a second. So centralized identity schemes basically allow administrators to manage user accounts, and um, then we can then let users log into multiple network systems using the same login details. So now when the authentication happens, the authentication itself happens over the network. So, um, and in a larger organization, that's often preferable. 
Um, so we can um, basically just have manage the passwords in one place um, and then everyone can use it. And uh, a way that w there are various protocols that exist that allow us to do that over a network so that the authentication itself, rather than just looking in the shadow file um, and the password file, they can do some network communication to check with the server with, um, on whether they've passed the authentication checks. So here's some examples of some protocols and some, si and some systems that can be used to do that. So we can have uh, users on a network um, authenticating against a, a, like a centralized place. Um, and so we might have five workstations uh, and one server that holds all the usernames and passwords you know, in a hashed format. Uh, and then every time anyone sits on any of those machines, over the network it checks um, whether or not the credentials match. So some examples of this uh, is LDAP, or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Um, there is Kerberos. Uh, there's Active Directory. Uh, there's NIS, Network Information Service, or NIS Plus. Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service, or RADIUS, as some examples. Um, now, they all work in different ways, and actually, they all have slightly different purposes. Um, for example, LDAP is actually, you can store anything in it. You just happen to, to be able to use it for authentication, so it gets used a lot in Linux systems. Um, Active Directory um, happens to kind of make use of Kerberos within itself, but Active Directory is a whole, like, whole set of um, features within Windows and how like domains and things work um, within uh, and how authentication and everything works on, on Windows systems. So um, in some separate videos, we'll cover those in some more detail. And um, just finally, some things to think about is when we're authenticating over the network and we've got authentication happening over the network, it's important that someone who happens to be listening in on the network can't just see the passwords and things, um, and can't just see the, whatever secret authentication information is there, uh, so they can just like reuse it, So, which is known as a replay attack, if they can just listen to the network and then, oh, now I can log in. That's a problem, so we need to make sure that systems are designed in like a secure way. Um, and <clears throat> you know this is all related to public key cryptography. So you've got your um, public keys, which you make public, and you've got private keys that you keep to yourself. Um, but a lot of these like, authentication mechanisms where we have to prove that we are who we say we are with a password, for example, we have like a, a set of communication that happens that we need to you know, make sure that that's happening in, in, a, in a secure way. Um, and federated identity, um, just as another aside, is where you've got multiple user accounts from multiple organizations that yeah, work in a connected way. So for example, um, you might have one organization with their own um, Active Directory set up and they've got a bunch of employees. You've got another organization with their Active Directory set up and they've got some employees, but you could set access rules that say, well, your organization are allowed to access these files in these ways. Um, <clears throat> so that's known as federated identity, where you have identity across multiple organizations. So, um, Hopefully that um, quick fire overview of um, network-based authentication um, concepts has been helpful to help you understand what these things mean. And in a separate video, I'll go over it in a, a little bit more detail.